I believe we're on. So uh, thank you for joining, Kev. Hello to uh, whomever may be on this watch party on the um, Base Fook channel, um, aka Facebook. <laughs> and um, we are uploading to Tube after and I'm um, going to embed onto the dot com. So it is Friday, the 17th of April. It is 1 p.m. Um, we aim to do this earlier on in the week, but we've had some technicalities with software, bandwidth, bit rates, processors. I'll leave it there. So welcome to the Castle Defence Home uh, Security. And uh, we're going to give you an introduction. And it's pretty much self-explanatory. We have a concern for um, family safety within the Britain, England, and primarily the public commercial area of the United Kingdom regarding agents, rogue traders, cold callers, and um, unwanted peddlers at the property. We recognize there are vulnerable members in society, not just our family, but we classify them as our family by extension. And um, this is part of a um, sacred contract that we'd like to uh, fulfill. So thank you, Kevin. You want to say hello, introduce, and anything before we go? Hello, everybody. Anybody listening into this, thanks for joining us. Hope there's some information helpful to you. And uh, yes, we'll catch you all on the flip side of this with your criticisms and etc. Praise and grumble. Praise and grumbles. That's the one I was looking for. <coughs> me, 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 me. Let's go, bro. <laughs> oh, it's here. I'm Let's going to look. It's here. Big thing in your <laughs> face. So this is the introduction. This is part one of a four-part video presentation. And um, the introduction goes a little something like this. Rogue traders and cold callers at the property, your property, private properties, uh, non-commercial, domestic, etc., via uh, calls to the property in person, knocking at doors, and also then the telephone lines is going to be in video too. So this is part one, and it's to do with attendees at your property. Cold callers and rogue traders, they trick Woman, often by present, pretending to be tradesmen, such as builders, and or possibly charging overinflated prices for unnecessary, shady, or shoddy work. They will often try to gain admittance, contracts, agreements without an appointment, which is known as cold calling. We consider this harassment if it's uninvited, uh, unexpected, because it might not be convenient for you to be dealing with them at that time when they knock, and or trespassing on property or private property. Um, woe man's rights, as we also view man, when we say man, we, we say woe man because there's two here, um, female and you know, male. And man's rights we view at SPL's Pro and um, in our uh, clans and families as property. An ignorance of man's rights, therefore, as we class them as property, um, these actions are now considered acts of a form of terrorism if you ignore a man's rights, because rights can be in law categorized and pointed, you know, uh, highlighted as property. And so these would be crimes then, and when your property is abused um, and your rights are ignored. So these aren't criminal offenses now. These are crimes on, on man's rights on a, in a sense, okay? So to avoid becoming a victim of fraud or crime or assault and trespass, um, etc., from cold callers and rogue traders, let us look at these simple steps that we've outlined in this publication, which will be released in due course for you as a free download. Um, and these will be what we would like you to consider when a visitor has arrived. There is no legal advice here. This is just a private uh, production that's a presentation I and Kevin, Greg have talked about. And, um, uh, and this is why we are here, to give you information. No legal advice, we're not members of the bar, we're not attorneys, we're not licensed, we're not registered or anything. So uh, I just wanted to say that little disclaimer there in case anyone's confused as to what capacity and why we're here. Thank you. Okay. We have a few points for you to consider when these visitors have arrived. Number one, lock your back door before answering the front door. Number two, never agree to have work done by somebody who has knocked on your door without a prior appointment or contact. Number three, use a spy hole, chain or window to have a look at the caller before answering the door and keep the chain on. If you do not recognize the caller, 
then speak through the closed and locked door or a small window if you can. Yeah. Uh, uh, number four, always ask for proof of identity. Take it from the person through the letterbox if necessary or through the gap in the door if you've got your chain on and uh, read it carefully before deciding what to do. Number five, never use a phone number provided by the caller as it could be a false number to an accomplice. You can use all the time in the world. You're not under any pressure. So if they give you a, you know, something from such and such a company, jump on your computer or your phone, go and get a number for that company that's listed rather than the one they're handing you. Cause that goes on a lot. <clears throat> Uh, number six, avoid going outside so they can show you what needs doing as they will probably have an accomplice who will enter your house while you are distracted to, to steal from you. That's, this is a very common occurrence going on these days. Number seven, never pay for work before it is completed. Always agree a final price in writing and get an invoice and receipt as proof of payment. Number eight, do not accept any offer to drive you to the bank to withdraw money or give, or, or give them your bank details. Number nine, if you need work done, then visit, for instance, www.checkertrade.com or contact your local council's trusted trader service. Number 10, place a sign in your window of the front rooms and or front door, CCTV recording. Uh, notice, notice the agents that they and their actions are being recorded. Number 11, film all encounters if you so choose. And if threats of theft of property and injury, damage, torts, etc., are being thrown at you on behalf of your all caps legal person. Number 12, do not throw any water or materials onto them <laughs> as much as you might want to. Injuries and damages will occur. Uh, execute your rights, defend them under law and always remain sovereign throughout the encounter. You're just going to give them ammo if you do anything to them, and then you're going to have uh, the, the little <laughs> blue-clothed Nazis attending to, which you don't want. That's when it all starts. Uh, number 13, consider displaying the police borderline rule, trespass, Trespass. All visitors seen strictly by prior advance appointment only. And number 14. Consider displaying the removal of implied, implied rights of access. That's a very good one. Have that on your gate, on your door, laminated. Put it up. And just one minute. Very quickly, for a quick visual, that's what um, we have for a download that we'll be um, issuing with these documents. So there's no sensitive data on there. I do believe it's just a, a standardized, laminated, one-sided A4 notice. And then we have for consideration the police borderline rule that, we, um, that we've uh, found along our discovery roads. And that would be including an email, and we'll talk about that uh, later in the watch parties going further on and we'll display these for free downloads and um, praise and grumbles. Um, previously it used to be common law jurisdiction applies exclusively. Um, that's all very well and good. Um, I and Kev, we, uh, Kevin, sorry, uh, operate under common law primarily, mosaic, God's law. We don't think we're above um, or below anybody. We're equal. Equality is paramount and um, you have a right to choose and you have a right to be informed. So moving on. Um, we uh, to enforce these, you would need to let the uh, local extension of the government and um, corporations know the change of uh, circumstances, um, and that would be to notice your local extension of government, which 
would form under your council, your local council and your local police of the area. And there are ministers and other areas, higher levels of government we can notice as well. But for the time being, we're keeping it. Um, this is the beginning entry level, simple. And um, we do this noticing to the councils and the local police to be in honour. We keep the clean hands doctrine. They are clean, um, as in what we found with the clean hands and who, who come out with that. That's not our policy. It's their policy that we have to uh, um, recognise exists. Uh, they're not our rules, so to speak. And this is done to enforce the notices under the doctrine of notice will lie at the heart of uh, equitable um, remedy seeking. Those that seek equity must do equity is one of the maxims there that we've learned. And one is uh, playing the game, the game of life. I've got low system resources, Kev, it's telling me to uh, close some bits. So um, we'll see okay. how we go on this. <laughs> Noted. Um, under the doctrine of, yeah, one must play the game with clean hands and remain in honour. Okay. <clears throat> Furthermore, a person who comes to your house without an appointment, who is selling something or offering work on your house or property, land, garden, is classified as a doorstep cold caller. Inform them that they are that you are not interested and ask them to leave. If they refuse, call the police, dial 999. If you feel at risk or are being threatened or pressured, you may film them, take photos, and or use CCTV. Call family and or the trustee of your street. If your street is without a trustee, then consider appointing one. Under God, not legal or public codes. So first, request to leave. If they fail, that's trespass. Second request to leave, if they fail, is aggravated trespass. And a third request to leave, if they fail, would be criminal trespass. Never, never, I repeat, never give bank details to a caller, even those claiming to be from charities. Police will have a list of charitable organisations visiting your area, which can be checked by calling 101. It is recommended that you contact the charity directly if you wish to make a regular donation through your bank or building society. Display a no cold calling sticker on your door, which are free from trading standards and never buy items, goods and services from people calling at your door. If you have any doubt, keep them out, chicken out. And remember, you do not have to answer your castle or callus, also known as a door. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you, Kev. I've, uh, I've enjoyed that. We had a little bit of a <laughs> slow system resources there, so we're going to end this video as it's our first Zoom um, application. That's what we're on. We're not advertising it. We've had to use this uh, <laughs> because my laptop is not able to handle the open broadcasting software at the minute. We need to upgrade processors, RAM, and et cetera, for us to be able to do... Um, uh, videos with boxes on and uh, etc. Um, sorry, I'm just checking the screen messages. Uh, uh, so we're getting there. We hope this new format is acceptable and then um, we shall end here and we're going to come back with part two and that will be 13 ways to deal with uninvited, unwanted salesmen, cold callers, incoming telephone calls now um, on that scenario. This is non-exhaustive, typical scenarios. So we've gone through man in, uh, in presence at the door on the property. Now we're going to go through the telephone line access point video two coming up shortly. So thank you to our, our brother Kevin there. Thank you to all on this watch party. Thank you to the YouTube. Thank you to the private domain, um, you know, uh, sub supporters, scribes and um, uh, sovereign initiates of self and law. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Kev. Thank, thank you all. Pleasure. All right.